Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. The brother Rick Hyde. What's poppin'? What's going on, brother? I'm chillin', man. The How Buffalo, you doing? Buffalo, New York. Yeah, the biggest. The, the Buffalo. Big, the biggest Buffalo, New York. Yes, Tell sir. us a little bit about Rick Hyde. Who is Rick Hyde, my brother? Rick Hyde is Benny's first artist. Benny the Butcher, for the people who ain't familiar. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, that's my brother. We've been together for like 20 years almost. Mm-hmm. Um, Rick Hyde is Buffalo, man. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the torch. Probably after Griselda, more than likely, you know, because all things, all good things come to an end. Mm-hmm. But then, I mean, <laughs> wow, damn, you ended the group. No, I ain't trying to put that on them, but like, not like that. But they do. I just in the Griselda. Damn. It's over. They do. I mean, at some point, at some point, yeah. I mean, ain't nobody gonna, you know, you know how it go in this mm-hmm. rap shit. Rick, you know how you know what it is? That's for your gum. Oh yeah, my gum. I'm sorry. <laughs> you did that like my auntie. That's <laughs> my auntie. No, That's exactly what my auntie and my grandma do at church. All right, man, come on, let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. So how'd you start? How'd you, how'd you get into the rap game? Explain Buffalo, because Buffalo was a, a place of New York where a lot for a long time they didn't respect it being part of New York. It was when when you said New York. No, don't say y'all. Yeah, who is y'all? Y'all as in y'all New Yorkers. Well, us New Yorkers. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Thank Thank y'all. Thank you. I appreciate you for that. Where did you get All that right. small water from? Well, New York. <laughs> Downstairs. Oh. <laughs> Man, I don't know how or why that concept came about because we right there. Literally six hours away. my I got a New York State ID in my pocket right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they didn't consider us, but now it's like they, they won't leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, the funniest shit in the world to me is when people be like, man, you know, ain't no New York rappers hot right now. Now you hear the DJ be like, Griselda? <laughs> right. like, y'all ain't never used to claim Buffalo. Right. Stop it. Well, I think New York City and New York State is, you know, different things. That's oh. what, I mean, it is. New York City is a different area than York the State whole resident? state. I am a yes, I am a New York. You got state. A New York state, but ID, I'm a New right? York City because we have like a different mayor. But then you, know? you can say Yonkers yeah, too. But, you can but, say Yonkers too. Right. That's not the five boroughs, and you got Jada Kiss, you got Dia. Yeah, yeah, but you true. saw the battle, and Mary. you saw how how Dipset tried to be like we yeah. from New York. Of course, but we all had the same white idea in our pocket. I'm not mad at <laughs> it. Real. I never, that's I never real. tried to play Buffalo. But what I'm saying is New York City. That's why people consider it different because it is right. six hours away. It's cold. It's cold in the winter everywhere. Like, but but it has to feel good to really put Buffalo on the map the way that you guys have. That's a great feeling. I can't I can't even like fathom it. Like you know we did this. We've been doing rap the way we rap for for the longest mm-hmm. of time, mm-hmm. and it's like for it to come to fruition, and how how the people been perceiving it. It's it's a great feeling, man, because it's like everything you imagine. Mm-hmm. It's like a it's like a young kid hooping his whole life, like. You want to go to the league. Like, that's your aspiration. That's mm-hmm. your goal. And I think that's what we wanted to achieve, and I think we're doing so. You think it was necessary to have to start your own, like, collective and to start for Griselda Records to start their own label for things to really happen the way that they did? Uh, We've been together, like, like really, we all been together since, like, 07. Mm-hmm. So we've really been doing this. Um, I think it took for the rest of the music to die down. Like, um, it was it was oversaturated with a lot of BS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I mean to say the least, and um, I, I like the like the homies picked the perfect time to kick in the doors, and uh, like it's been happening. Like I, I'm I'm forever grateful. Shout out to the fans. Uh-huh. If y'all were together so long, <laughs> why weren't you a member of Griselda? That wasn't your clique, or nah, nah, it just wasn't formulated like that. Now I mean, we all we all like like you know you got your group of homeboys. Some of them some of them tighter than others, mm-hmm. and not even not even like on no like nothing like segregated types. It's just this is how it all how it unfolded. Um, like I don't consider Westside or Conway lesser a homie than I do Benny. Like them, my all my big brothers. Mm-hmm. It was just the career path and just how it all planned out. So I, I mean, I'm I, I'm not I'm not left off bad and bougie. I'm good. <laughs> and, t- and timing is everything, right? Timing is everything. Yeah. That's a fact. And business is everything. Business. So you guys have made some great business decisions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I attribute that to Wes. Wes is a genius. Benny is a genius. Conway is a genius. Like um, like because like I said. Stuff like this don't happen where we come from, mm-hmm. like at all. Like it ain't happened since Rick James. All right. So like, um, for it to happen and for for the homies to have it in the head like how they do, like that's a blessing. How, how, how did growing up in Buffalo like just in, influence your, your style and, and creativity? It's a survival of the fittest. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta be, you gotta be strong. You gotta be hungry. Um, 
Buffalo was considered one of the most dangerous cities mm-hmm. for a long time, like on CNN, all that, all those little charts and all of that. So, like, you got to stay dangerous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we always alert, we always ahead of the curve, and we always, I mean, work towards whatever goal we set for ourselves. Did you have a day job? A couple. I had a great like job what? before I did this. Tell I had us, a great what job. You, what did I you worked do? at the airport. Okay. I was man. I what? You at first, flew out. Yeah. What? <laughs> Travel flight credits. All of that. Selling buddy passes. Yeah. You nah, know. Nah, nah, nah. I ain't selling mine because I had oh. to catch up with the homies. They okay. 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 So, got you. Got you. Got you. Like um. So at the airport first, I started out as a ramp agent. That's where you clean the plane when it land and you turn it around. I mean, get it ready. How to... much stuff y'all found on that plane before? I know you found cell phones. Laptops. Yeah, I, I got my kids a tablet a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> what? A couple of little dollars. <laughs> and, you know, you find a lot of random, a lot of random stuff. But, but uh, everybody tend to call. Like, as soon as they lose it, they'll call right in. Yep. And you, can't really, you can't really hide it at that point. Right. And then after that, I, I was working in the back of the airport in cargo and freight. I mean, that's when they load How the bodies and stuff. How many bags y'all went in? Why would you put that on him? Because I'm, I'm asking, man. No, no, no. You can't really go in nobody bag yeah, when you in cargo on, and freight. Effie. Cargo yeah. and freight is like more. I'm more. I'm more or less was. I was handling like the dead bodies that they ship. Oh my like god. Like when people ship, they 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 people to. I was handling that type of stuff. The Damn. pets when people are doing sending mm-hmm. their, uh, pets flowers like when you like the stuff that's in the back part of the plane. Got you. I was that didn't creep that. you out handling dead bodies. Nah, because before that, because prior to that, I was a security guard and I used to work at the hospital. And the hospital I worked at in South Buffalo, they call it the heroin hospital because uh-huh. that's where all the ODs happen. Mm. So I, and as a security guard there, you got to walk the, the funeral home people down to the morgue. You got to sign off. You got to watch them so they don't do nothing crazy. So you was used so, to it? Yeah, I was used to it. Like, I, I love the way you answered that question, man, because, you know, most people be like, nah, I was, I was in the street. I was doing X, Y, and Z. Nah, nah, nah. I mean, I did, I did my little dabbling, of yeah, course. Yeah, it's yeah. where I'm from. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I don't need, I don't need to speak on that. Like, I don't I – don't, that's not what I promote. My son listened to me, man. All right, that's real. Yeah. So then you that's did the real. ramp, then you did the back of the plane, and then what else? That was that was it. After that, after that, um, Benny and them had went on the tour with the locks. Um, I called off too many times. <laughs> they, they like, all right, man. But they find you ain't quit. Now, now it was like a mutual thing. They like, bro, you don't really want to be here. That's not where your right. heart at. It's like just go pursue what you want to do, and I and I respected that. They you did know? you a favor, really? They they did me a huge favor. They you probably would have never let it go. What? No, they had great benefits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, fly nowhere for fifty dollars right now. Unless you, unless you book it an hour. Spirit, yeah, a spirit, unless you maybe. Book it two months in advance. Nah, spirit, they charge you thirty dollars to use the bathroom. Damn. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> spirit is crazy. He said, "Wow, really?" <laughs> What's the hip hop scene in Buffalo now? Because there was none before Griselda. Yeah. So what does it look like now? Because I'm sure there's other crews coming up and everything because of Griselda. Yeah, I mean. Like right now, right now we pretty much got it sold up. I'm not gonna lie, mm-hmm. I'm, and I, I just say that respectfully as possible. Like we got it sold up. <laughs> the way to go through Buffalo is through us. Mm-hmm. Um, but you got, I got, I got homeboys rapping and whatnot. Shout out the drum work. That's Conway label. He got a couple of my close friends on his label. Mm-hmm. Um, West been doing little endeavors in Buffalo with other little artists, and uh, I'm just happy where it's at mm-hmm. right now because. Mm-hmm. Cause it's doing it's doing a, it's doing a positive from where we from, man. We right. we we lived in poverty so much, man. In Buffalo, man, it was like Buffalo is like the the, the typical middle class city. Mm-hmm. It's like no, no more than that, though. It's like nobody rich as hell in Buffalo except for the Bills players, right? A couple doctors maybe, but it's like now you got some street dudes from the east side that's rich as hell coming mm-hmm. through, cutting through west. Got the Rolls Royce over potholes and sh- like you wow. don't see shit like that unless you're looking at the videos. Yeah. How do the police treat you guys at home? Who? The police, you know. They hate I'm, us. Really? Hell yeah. I mean, some of them, some of them, you gotta, some of them respect us and they love us because they actually, because in Buffalo, you forced to get a good job. You know, I will say that. Like, it's great jobs, great opportunities in Buffalo. So a lot of the homies are police officers. Mm-hmm. So that kind of like eased up the, the tension. But for the most part, man, they hate our guts. You know, what? Because they know our background. Mm-hmm. But y'all could do a lot probably to change that just by, and I, just by doing stuff in the community, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of community work that get done. Uh, Conway just got himself a, a day in Buffalo, the other, like last week. Mm-hmm. Um, today, RIP to my big homie Shay. Shay. It's the, it's the year, uh, year anniversary of his passion. To, wow. Yeah, today is Damn. the actual year anniversary. That's why I'm dropping my album tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I wanted to do it today, but you know. For people that don't know who DJ Shay is. DJ Shea, Shea is the GOAT of Buffalo. When you think of Buffalo, you think of hip hop, you, you should think of DJ Shea before you think of Griselda because if it wasn't for Shea, it wouldn't be a Griselda. 
Like, honestly. Explain Shay put, how that happened. Shay had us all in one spot for years. And Shay, like Benny has said, uh, shout out to bro, too. He not here. He was feeling a little bit under the weather. He, we didn't want to risk nothing. So mm-hmm. we got tour coming up. But uh, Shay is, um, he was pivotal. He called himself the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I agree with that 100 fold because what he did for us was he took us off of off of the streets mm-hmm. and he locked us in the studio for days, like at a time sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I we seen what he was doing and, and what the form like this that we living out is is his dream. Like he always wanted to do it. Like so shout out to Shay, man. Did he, he create the sound? COVID, right? From COVID nah, he didn't I, like that's something I want to clear up too. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't pass away from COVID. COVID. He didn't he had he he had got it, but he it did, it's the complications from COVID. Mm-hmm. He ended up developing like liquid in his lungs and shit and then the, the Turned into a, a pneumonia, mm. and he and yeah, you know, Shay had other problems with diabetes and shit like that. Yeah. So it wasn't the cold. He actually ended up kicking that, and it was the other shit that complicated it. Gotcha. Would you think? Would you say he created the sound for Griselda? Yes. Okay. Yes, a hundredfold. Mm-hmm. Hundredfold. Uh, excuse me. Shay was Shay was always boom bapping. Mm-hmm. Even when we branched off and we was trying to do like trap music and all, Shay was always boom bapping. Mm-hmm. Like Derringer came up under Shay, like so. So and they say Derringer is the the, the generator, the, the general of the sound of Griselda. Mm-hmm. So it had to come from somewhere. I respect the fact that y'all stuck to that sound. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it was a sound that wasn't really cutting through. I mean, it was it's a classic sound, mm-hmm. but it wasn't cutting through. The fact that y'all stuck to it and now y'all prospering from it. Yeah, I, I was. I'm surprised we stuck to it. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you said you did try to venture out and. Oh, every mm-hmm. man, every we we still do like. Uh, it's a little bit more impactful now, but like what a lot of artists don't realize coming up, it, it take a lot to be a trap artist mm-hmm. or whatever kind of whatever whatever they consider that genre of music. Like you have to come out already swinging. You gotta already have fifty thousand on you. Mm-hmm. You already gotta be chained up. <laughs> you already gotta be wearing Balenciaga, or you going nowhere. Like that's for real, for real. <laughs> like as opposed to this, all you gotta do is slap on some Tims and a, and a you know, some up. jeans and the team. Right. You straight as long as you spitting that shit. You straight. And it's a time. It's timeless because like yo, it's more people living like that than it is that lavish. Ball and shit, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, like the way the locks look. That's a timeless. I was, I was just about to say that Jadakus proved yeah, it. Jadakus proved that. our Jadakus proved our theory. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jada, man. That's Tim's it. Jeans, a t-shirt. That's man. it, man. That's it. That's Do the all comparisons it ever bother you when they when they compare like you know your sound to say other groups that came before nah, you? Nah, it's an honor mm-hmm. because because that's where it generated from. Like it's got to start from somewhere. Like we big fans of the Wu. We big fans of the locks. We like uh, so to have those people like pass the torch down to you or to interact with those people and they and they and they give you the utmost regard like that's a blessing mm-hmm. like that's a blessing like you can't pay for nothing like that right. like to have Jay Z on your side just you know what I mean mm-hmm. you got no no you're not signed to him you're not you know what I mean no no but just have him in your corner like that, that's a blessing like I, man, you can't beat that mm-hmm. I, I mean what now, <laughs> now I know you're coming back up here. With Benny the Butcher. Yeah, definitely. And we just wanted yeah, to talk about yeah. your album that's out right now. So talk, tell them about the album and everything. And Plates 2. And Benny Plates executive two. produced it. Yeah, Benny executive produced it. Um, Shay helped me before he passed. Um, My album is going to be crazy, man. What we try to do now, uh, now that we established and we got our foot in the game, is we try to create the moments in hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like my album is going to be a moment in hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a true underdog story. You got young man like me. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a regular nigga, man. I got the same story as any other light-skinned dude with the beard and dimples, man. <laughs> but for real, though, you know what I'm saying? But I do this shit for my kids. I do this shit for my family. I lost my mom. Like, and her her and Shay was, like, real close. So that's what... So I, I like, dedicated to Shay and my mom. Like, you got the song I, Mama Love. Yeah, Mama Love Part mm-hmm. 2. It's going to be, like, that's my... The first one was crazy. Mm-hmm. I know when people hear this one, tears. Because I, I cried. I don't really cry. Like, last time I cried was her funeral. I don't really cry, but when I was writing this, man, I cried. I ain't gonna lie. Mm. So, like, I I want people to to understand that, like, I'm gonna embody and and capture a moment when this joint, like, when you listen to it, like, you know what I mean? It's it's okay to cry, man. It's okay to cry because I'm really spilling my heart out on this joint. And I'm rapping my ass off, like so. I'm 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 proud of it. I'm proud of how it came out. With the mama's love, you think that'll end up being a series because. 
you know, it, it doesn't really get easier, right? Yeah, but, never, but over never. time, you constantly thinking about different things about the situation. Yeah, hell yeah, man. I damn near cried last night. Just think, I seen uh, my uncle posted a picture of my mom on Facebook, and as I was on a plane. That shit just took me. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, so I mean, I'm I, I I read a comment on YouTube the other day. You know, the fans is harsh, man. They don't care about nothing. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, Rick, all right, you always talking about his mom. Uh, like, what kind yeah, who of stupid else? shit is that? Like, I'm like, who else going to talk about her? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My older brother in the feds, he can't he can't do nothing but call me. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? My little brother, he he up and coming in his music. But who else going to talk about her? I'm on I'm on this on, on this scale that I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So, hell yeah, bro. I'm going to talk about my mom each and every chance I get. I'm going to keep her name alive. As you should. Hell yeah. Talk, talk to us about Hustler's, Hustler's Prayer. What does, what does that mean to you when you... When Hustler's you Prayer... To me, it's like, like when I was doing this song, I was thinking like, I'm like, man, what do, what can I say, that's gonna garner the mass appeal, but, but it's like really true, like true, like every every hustler pray to, to wake up the next morning, you know what I'm saying? You pray that the count is right first and foremost, <laughs> and then you pray to wake up the next morning. So I was, man, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to God my soul to keep, and if I die before I wake up, I'm just thankful for this paper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's just real shit. For yourself, when you signed this deal, what was that like for you? Uh, like I said, it's like like a kid going to to the NBA. Like, shout out to my boys, man. You know what I mean, I got a couple of little NBA homies. You know what I'm saying? I got uh, my man Davion Warren. He played for Texas Tech. He gonna go to the league. He from Buffalo, young kid. Mm -hmm. My boy Ticket. Um, like, like it's something. It's something you work for, but you don't never fathom until it happens. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's what you always like. You train. Like, I've been rapping forever, like, literally since, like, the seventh grade. So when they came and they presented the offer, like, we was in, like, a like a bidding war almost. It was, like, three, four different labels trying to, like, get with us. But we ended up going with E1. Shout out to E1 Music. Um, and you signed during the pandemic? In the, during, was it yeah, during? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, like, it was like, uh, like right during, like, April. April last year we signed. And, that, and I'm pissed, man. That pandemic slowed down a little bit. Yeah, because in the beginning, you didn't know how long it was going to last. So Right. You know, I, I had just moved to Atlanta. We was just fresh off tour. Literally, like, literally fresh off tour. We had went to the club, all of us. Me, Wes, Conway, we all, we all was there. We had a great time. It's like, it, it's like we all was never in a room like this together, except for on tour. Like, so we in the club, bottles, Ace of Spade, Duce, sponsorship, let's get it. <laughs> yeah. Next morning, we wake up, CNN, breaking news, stay in the crib. Like, whoa, whoa, we just came outside. <laughs> Damn. Then, like, two days later, it was like, nah, nah, stay in the crib for 17 days. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just, we just literally moved. To, it's nothing in our house in Atlanta, literally. We had got the house a month before tour ended. It's nothing in there. Like, so we, this shit is bare. We can't, like, we, we go to Walmart. We spent, like, shout out to Walmart. We spent, like, 10000 in Walmart. Because it's the only <laughs> place that's out. open. That's like, yeah, y'all got furniture from Walmart. <laughs> nah, nah, we ordered furniture offline by the grace of God. But, <laughs> I mean, all the little trinkets and all of that, right. man, we went crazy in Walmart. <laughs> so we had to turn the house to a home ASAP. So we, then, then they said, it's over. Like, you really can't leave. I said, no. Nah. <laughs> like, I just signed. Like, no, nah, we, nah, we signed the deal in yeah. the studio in Atlanta because they, we had the DocuSign because we couldn't come up here because this was all the way closed. This yeah, shit looked like yeah, I am right. legend. I it was, definitely did. <laughs> I was like, no, nah. I was like, I've never seen this place like this. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, it helped. It hurt it and helped, though, because people got to sit down and do their research. Mm -hmm. Right. So they got to discover who we were. Uh, we got to make timeless music. Um, How was your work ethic during that time? Uh, amazing! I I put out quality shit last year. Like mm -hmm. we did the Respected Sopranos album with DJ Drama. Mm -hmm. We did that all from the living room in Atlanta, just vibing, quarantine locked up. Shout out to Drama. That shit is that was beautiful. That that was a moment <coughs> in hip hop. Um, I ended up we ended up going to L.A. Leakers. I tore that down. Mm -hmm. We went to Sway. I tore that down. Um, you know what I mean? So I just I I stayed busy. Right. I stayed busy. Mm -hmm. You also the first rapper from Griselda to come to the Breakfast Club. I'm yeah, not from. Yeah. Oh, word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, was yeah gonna cut, I was gonna correct you, but no, no, no. You're you, you, you the first from that, from that crew. Okay, okay I'll, from the, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take yeah. That first. No, and that's what's up. I think it's because Benny said that line. I did. Uh, I, I, I sat down. When he said the interviews with Connects, not the Breakfast Club. Right. And yeah, I think yeah. he want to live his raps, so that's why he's avoiding <laughs> the Breakfast Club. That's what I think. 
Nah, nah, nah. He was gonna come up here. Like he, I talked to him last night. He was ecstatic, but I know he he a little bit under the weather. And it's his daughter's birthday. A little oh, bit, or, 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 absolutely. So he he'd probably be out here later. I'm having a little party in Brooklyn. Y'all ain't doing nothing. Pull up. I would never do that. I'm too old for that type of shit. <laughs> Show me what I'll last ever scared. <laughs> <laughs> Where you go? Man? A Griselda party in Brooklyn? Nah, nah. nah uh, it's, I gonna mean, be, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna but be it's, fine. It's, it's right downtown, right? It's right downtown. Flatbush Avenue. Yeah, isn't nah, it? it's it's gonna be it's gonna be yeah. an experience. Right over the bridge. I believe you. That's more you. I'll watch it on Instagram. Rick <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah.